Hey everyone, John here and welcome back to Collegiate Tech. Today I just wanted to take a couple minutes to talk to you guys about flagship smartphones, the Pixel 2 XL in particular, and my year of experience with it in my pocket as a daily driver. I initially purchased this phone in 2017 after owning an iPhone 6S for probably a year and a half, two years or so, uh, with no previous Android experience at all. Like many people who purchase a new piece of technology, I was very excited to get my hands on it, start experiencing the operating system, and noticed a lot of things that I really enjoyed, including how clean the entire experience was. However, in this video, I wanted to cover my thoughts and reactions after a full year, rather than just a couple weeks of owning the phone, and see how it's held up over time. So first things first, the camera on this phone. We dedicated an entire video to talking about this phone's camera and comparing it to the iPhone X uh, earlier this year. So if you wanna check that out, click the link right up here in the corner. To this day, the camera has not ceased to amaze me. And in fact, it's actually gotten even better because of the software changes that Google has made over the last year, including things like Night Sight from the Pixel 3 launch and other small uh, background API changes like the way the new panorama mode works and then also kind of including the Google camera API within Snapchat. It's just little subtle things like that have improved this camera greatly. Additionally, 2018 actually saw the release of Android P. Uh, it's the ninth version of Android's mobile operating system, and it actually kind of reimagined the way that Android is navigated uh, with the menus, especially on the Pixel. It's got a little button at the bottom. Instead of the, the three buttons that Android users are usually accustomed to, it's now got one kind of a pill-shaped button on the bottom that's actually used for swiping notifications, swiping navigation, and things like that, rather than just clicking the buttons themselves. Overall, it's more intuitive, less clunky, and makes this phone more enjoyable to use. 2018 also gave me the opportunity to experience something from an Android perspective that I previously experienced with Apple, and that's wearable technology. Back when I owned an iPhone, I had an Apple Watch for about a month or two. I actually bought it from Michael. We did a, a whole series of videos on his Apple Watch Series 3. I just ended up purchasing the Series 1 from him when he upgraded. And I really enjoyed the flexibility that gave me, the notifications that I was able to handle, the overall design of the watch, and just the way it looked. It felt classy. So in light of that, I'm currently wearing the Fossil Q Explorist Gen 4 smartwatch. And that's, in my opinion, one of the best smartwatches you can possibly buy in the Android spectrum. Again, full video right here. We're going to talk about that. Uh, if you Go ahead and click that for just kind of an overview of the watch and comparing it to the Apple Watch and how the ecosystems work together. However, this next statement might actually surprise you. As someone who's been talking about Android for the better part of a year, I've actually stopped seeing the praises of this phone. The Pixel 2 XL, while it's actually a great device, has degraded in performance and quality over the last year, and I just want to take a minute to talk about some of the things I've noticed specifically. So to touch more in detail on the hardware issues, for example, the YouTube app, when I open it and load it and then go to another app or even go to my home screen, when I go back to the app, it takes it five seconds usually to actually get back to where I was in the video. It kind of freezes and then loads and then freezes again and then I can finally resume playback. That's just something I've noticed over the last couple months as very disappointing. One of my biggest complaints and honestly one of the largest sacrifices coming from iOS to Android is losing iMessage and going back to something like a 25 year old standard like SMS messaging. There's something about iMessage that just makes it appealing. The way that group messages work, the customization with being able to name them, even individual conversations with things like delivered and read receipts. Just little things that SMS doesn't have and being able to send full quality photo and video over uh, iMessage and not SMS. Just lots of little things that make it difficult. But on top of that, the Messages app has been crashing a lot recently. I'll be sending a series of text messages, three or four in a row, depending on the conversation, and the whole app will freeze. It'll say Messages is not responding, and then I'll have to close the app and start all over again. And that, on top of the fact that I'm losing iMessage, is kind of the last nail in the coffin for at least the messaging side of things. While a hard restart of the phone usually fixes a lot of these problems and issues with the, the hardware crashes, that's not something I really want to expect from an $800 flagship phone. I shouldn't have to restart my entire device to get it to operate normally. In addition to the crashing and slowness issues I've discussed already, one of the things that's really disappointed me about the phone is its degraded battery life. Originally when I purchased the phone, I was able to work from about 7.30 to 11.30 at night on a full day of charge and just get an entire day's worth of battery out of it. But now, you know, 7.30 rolls around, I take it off the charger by 5.30 at night, 
I have to plug it in again. I'm at 25, 30% left, and that's just a lot lower. A little bit disappointed with how it's held up over time. Longevity is important. A phone manufacturer needs to be able to create a device that's going to last more than a single upgrade cycle. And that's, again, one of the things that Apple does very well, even with phones like the 5S still receiving the iOS 12 update. Whereas if you look at phones like uh, the Google Pixel, the Google Pixel 2, and even the Pixel 3, now that it's come out, you're noticing a lot more staggering in the performance issues and things are degrading much faster. It is very important to be able to create a piece of technology with a lifespan of longer than a year, and the Pixel seems to be choking. And honestly, as a college student, that's one of the most disappointing things, is that I invested a lot of money into this product, and I need it to last for a certain amount of time, two, three, maybe even four years, where this phone it's not giving me that length of time. It's not allowing me to, to work with a single device over my entire college career. And it would be really nice to have something that, especially on a budget, I could have for an extended period of time. And this sentiment has been backed up by several people, other tech YouTubers, and even all over the internet on Reddit and Twitter, places like that. Just people kind of overly disappointed with the, the general performance of the phone over time. In conclusion, yes, the Pixel 2 XL is still a good phone. Yes, it still fits how I use my phone, it fits the Google app suite perfectly, and yes, it, it integrates with the Google Assistant and all of the things I need it to do very smoothly. Yes, it's still the best mobile camera I've ever used. However, the slowdowns, hiccups, and general clunkiness of this phone over the course of a year are kind of pushing me in the direction. Next upgrade cycle, do I move back to iOS? So. Looking at the iPhone XR, for example, the, the amount of performance you can get on a budget and the, the amount of, of camera and phone and just the amount of technology you get for the price point they set it at is very encouraging to me. And even that phone's release alone is kind of pushing me in that direction. I'm leaning towards that for potentially my next upgrade. That about wraps everything up today. But if you have a Pixel 2 or really anything within that Google lineup and you just want to let me know you've experienced slowdowns or you've experienced software issues or even hardware issues with the phone itself, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'd love to start that discussion and just see what other people are experiencing. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content from Collegiate Tech.